Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our uh, August edition of AgFo to Go, which is our monthly webinar series that Ag Forestry Leadership is, is putting on. My name is Kara Calver. I am the program manager for the Ag Forestry Leadership Program. And today I would like to welcome our special guests, Senator Judy Warnick and Senator Kevin Vandeweg. Uh, for those of you that have just signed on, you may not have heard me say it yet. Oops. <laughs> Hold on just a second. Yep. There we go. Technical difficulties. Okay. Well, for your information, we need to ask questions and answers through the question and answer box. You'll find that at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions for the senators, well, I'll be taking them there, although I won't guarantee that we'll get to all of the questions, okay? So with that, I would like to introduce to you today, Senator Judy Warnick. She grew up on a small family dairy farm in Deer Park. She and her husband, Roy, own and operate a small business in Moses Lake. Judy and Roy have three grown daughters and eight grandchildren who all live in Eastern Washington. She currently serves as the ranking member of the Senate Agriculture, Water, Natural Resource and Parks Committee and is the Senate Republican Assistant Caucus Chair. I would also like to introduce today Senator Kevin Vandeweg, who is a firefighter, paramedic, a husband and a father. He's a lifelong Washington resident. He is serving his first term in the Senate after five terms in the House of Representatives. Senator Vandeweg is the chair of the Senate Agriculture, Water, Natural Resources, and Parks Committee. He also serves on the Senate Ways and Means Committee and is the Senate Health and Long-Term Care Committee. Senator Vandeweg is a proud resident of the beautiful community of Squim, along with his wife, Jennifer, who is a vice principal at Roosevelt Elementary School, and they both enjoy raising their two teenagers on the Olympic Peninsula. So help me in welcoming both senators uh, today for our webinar. And I just want to say thank you so much for spending your hour with us and, and, and sharing your expertise and giving us a legislative update. So with that, I'm going to turn it over first to Senator Warnig. If you wouldn't mind, would you please give us a brief legislative update? And then uh, Senator Vandeweg will turn it over to you when she's done. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Kara. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to meet with everyone today. Um, I'm learning more and more about technology than I'd ever thought I'd ever know um, at, at my age, <laughs> but it's because it's such a, a different year. 2020 is uh, a year we will not forget soon, but um, I, uh, I really appreciate being able to be on today with, uh, especially with Senator Vandeweg. He and I were elected to the legislature the same year, same time. So we're kind of classmates. And I know Ag Forestry has different classes and Senator Vandeweg and I are classmates as well. We started out, both of us in the House, and now we're in the Senate and we get to work on uh, ag issues, ag and natural resource issues together. Um, the the biggest update that I can give is we are working to try to keep um, keep everything going in this uncertain time. Um, I know agriculture is is extremely essential. Uh, we uh, I live and uh, we own a farm now too. My husband and I just recently purchased his family farm. And so we're, we're watching everything continuing along um, as far as, as farming, um, but other businesses in our community are not quite so fortunate. So I think as far as an update, um, I am working uh, every day to, to uh, uh, help all of our constituents who are facing issues from um, unemployment issues to uh, where they're going to get their food to um, what's, you know, what's next for them as far as a business owner. But uh, we're going to look at uh, bringing back a couple of bills from last year. Uh, if and when we get into session, um, Senator Vandeweg might be able to discuss that a little bit more, but uh, bring back bills regarding meat inspections and um, some type of uh, 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 cattle um, um, Cool country of origin label 
labeling. So we're looking at bringing that back as well. But um, that's that's as far as I can go as far as my update at this point. Um, and I'll go ahead and get started. It's, um, it is um, uh, great for this invitation and, and uh, appreciate uh, people getting on on board for an hour to listen to us and, and for the invitation. And I also, um, it's great to hear from Senator Warnick. Uh, I'm in a fortunate position where I get to work uh, with somebody who I know well and like, and, and uh, it, it helps us run a committee, I think. For legislative update, um, some uh, a few highlights would be uh, the, the governor did quite a few vetoes when we finished the 2020 session uh, in March. And a lot of those vetoes were centered around um, uh, the, the budget and, um, and we'll have to deal with those, I think, in the 2021 session as well. Um, he did them for budget saving reasons, uh, but they were pretty uh, broad and, and widespread. Um, I think uh, an area Senator Warnick I agree would be that we will prefer to, to go into special, special session. I certainly uh, would have preferred that. I would have preferred it to do it um, this month. That did not play out. Um, and right now, it doesn't seem like we're probably going to move in that direction. We, we may uh, do something in November, I think, would be the earliest. But um, right now, it, it seems to be pointing towards just waiting till a regular session in January. That, that's unfortunate, though. I, I would prefer to go into a special session, start making some uh, cuts, because the two-year fiscal biennium that the state works off uh, ends June 30th of 2021. So the budget shortfall um, that we will have to make up, the longer we wait, the, the more those cuts will need to be. Um, however, I would point out that I don't think we're going to have to make as cuts as severe as we did during the Great Recession, kind of the 2009, 10, and 11 sessions. Um, I think they'll be less severe. Two main reasons for that are uh, back then we didn't have the A fund, uh, which was passed by initiative after the Great Recession, and that will be helpful for 2021. But it won't if if the economy continues to languish. Um, it will. I, I have a feeling we're going to spend a majority of the money in 2021, so it won't uh, have time to be uh, rebuilt. And the other reason is there's more federal help with. Uh, um, COVID pandemic that we're in, um, we did not see as much federal help during the Great Recession, or it was in different different ways. And um, and this time, uh, Congress already has once has uh, given money to the states that um, our state has used and also passed on to local governments, who have in turn passed it on to some businesses. And then federal money have has gone directly to some businesses. So I think that is. More, more helpful than uh, we saw during the Great Recession. So those are two highlights that I hope will uh, lessen the, um, the cuts. As uh, Senator Warnick mentioned, I think food distribution is something we're all concerned about and will be continue to be concerned about during the 2021 session. And, and we'll be working to do what we can to uh, make sure that that outlook it looks good for the public. Um, and I would agree with her. I think we will do some um, stuff around uh, cattle. As she mentioned, the, um, we, we looked at legislation around uh, being able to source local beef uh, easier, and Oregon passed some legislation this year during the 2020 session in Oregon that, that did that, and um, I think we're both interested in copying that to some extent here in Washington State. So with that, I think that's my uh, legislative update. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. So speaking of COVID, um, I know the, the couple people that I've talked to have asked, how is COVID gonna impact the legislative session? And do you guys know yet what that might look like come January? And then also, 
I guess, what is the mood of, of your fellow legislators and how are you feeling going into this legislative session? Ju Judy, why don't you go ahead and take that one? Yeah, okay, and I muted myself. Um, the mood is one of trepidation, I think. Um, uh, at least uh, the folks that I've talked to, we're not sure what it's going to look like. Um, I know that other states have had uh, some special sessions and even have gone back for uh, regular scheduled sessions. Ours is from January through April of next year, uh, which is the normal uh, session time, unless we're brought back earlier. Um, I, we have never done a uh, virtual session. It would be very, very difficult to set up the way of the Senate rules are in place. We, in order to vote, we have to be on the floor of the Senate and, and be able to vote, vote with a voice vote. So there would have to be some major changes uh, if we were going to meet virtually. Um, and, you know, it's very, very difficult to meet with people. Um, I've, I've learned that over the last few months. Uh, even even the way we're meeting today, because you can't see each other. You can't uh, sit in the same room and, and have a discussion. So uh, committee hearings are supposed to be open to the public. Um, it's, uh, again, it's difficult if we're spread all over the uh, state and to, to open it up so that we can get good positive or, or negative impact on, on whatever bills are introduced. So, it's going to be uh, it, it's it's going to be different. Um, even even if we don't meet until uh, until January, um, I think there'll be some some key uh, key changes in in how we do meet. We actually ha ended our our 2020 session on March 12th or 13th right about the time that everything broke loose as far as COVID. And so we had um, all the protective uh, uh, manners that we could put in place so that we could meet. There's 49 of us that meet in one room, plus staff, plus the Lieutenant Governor. And so we did as much as we could uh, even before the end of session. So it's, it's going to be different um, no matter what we, you know, what we're doing as far as, as uh, this next session. But um, I, um, I think the, the biggest, and, and Senator Vandaway um, already addressed this, the biggest issue that we're going to be facing is, is, the, uh, is the budget. And how, what we can do with the Department of Agriculture, with the Department of Natural Resources, and other fish and wildlife, all those agencies, we, and Department of Ecology, I was trying to remember all of them, that we interact with as, as a committee, um, those, com those agencies, those departments are all going to be um, impacted by the budget. So are we going to have to look at what we passed last year and move forward and make some adjustments? Um, but they'll all be they'll all be impacted. And um, he did mention the federal dollars coming in for different purposes. Um, we'll have to determine what that what that's going to mean for those agencies as well. So I think we're going to have our work cut out for us. I I do agree that um, I wish we could have had a special session to at least start that process um, earlier. But. Uh, uh, there isn't uh, there isn't enough uh, incentive to do that apparently. So um, so we're uh, looking forward to getting back together in some manner to work together. And that's that'll be it for me. And I would just add uh, that um, I, just building on a couple of things that Senator Warnick mentioned, um, we do have our Senate rules. And so at some point, whether it's special or regular session, all 49 of us will have to be on the Senate floor to change our rules. I'm, I'm guessing that uh, it will become a mixture of um, people 
on the floor and the Senate voting and in committee hearings um, in person, um, people on campus, but in their offices uh, where they would still vote remotely, but they would be on campus. And then people that uh, are legislators that feel they need to stay at home for a, a variety of reasons and uh, would be, would be um, joining from there. Um, as Senator Warnick mentioned, other states have uh, worked already to solve these problems and, and uh, technology. And I think uh, the Secretary of the Senate and the, and the Chief Clerk in the House are uh, looking towards those states to see what they did and, and how they did it, what worked and, and what didn't work. So in, in that regard, we're fortunate in that we're not having to necessarily uh, solve all of these uh, problems on our own. Uh, other states have have done some some work there, um, but it, it's the public access. I think is the the one thing that's concerning to me. Um, it is going to be it is going to be tough for uh, the public to have uh, their input, both um, for uh, associations and and groups that. Um, uh, represent a large array of people. You know, the, the tree fruit, for instance, has an association and, and um, they can, they can uh, pass on their, their views through their association. That will be difficult, but it'll also be difficult for the average person to, to come down and be able to talk directly to their legislator and their representative. Um, I think there'll be ways to do it, but it won't be the same as in the past, and I again agree with Senator Warnick. It is I find it difficult to really feel uh, what people are saying and their and their passion when we're doing that remotely. So that's that's unfortunate. I think it, it's some stuff we'll be able to work through, but it is it is not going to be um, uh, optimal by by any means. Um, and then I think as far as COVID updates, that's, I, I guess, all I would have to say. Oh, the other thing I was going to mention is in the past, the legislature um, usually passes a few hundred bills, sometimes close to a thousand that make it all the way through the process and the governor actually signs into law. I think for all the things that we just mentioned, uh, there will be a lot less, uh, a lot less legislation passed this year. Um, in the, the, who that's I, I feel who that's going to affect the most is usually the state agencies. State agencies have a number of statutes that we've passed in the past that affect them. They're always looking to update those and expand those or get rid of those. And so the state agency request legislation uh, probably will be a lot of what falls to the side, um, unfortunately, because a lot of that, a lot of those updates um, we use in everyday life. Uh, that would be my guess because we as legislators want to represent our district and our constituents the best and so we always have a handful of bills that we're doing for uh, an issue that's maybe central to our district or um, impacts our district in some way and those you know will continue to be uh, a priority and the, and the less prioritized stuff will be um, I feel I worry I concern that the the state is requests legislation um, that might update a herbicide policy or, or deal with timber harvesting or something like that might not um, gain the attention that it has in past sessions. So Senator, you kind of alluded to what I, my next question was going to be. And um, uh, for Senator Warnick, specifically, if you could talk to us about maybe some of the things you see impacting agriculture coming down or natural resources. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. this next year. And for Senator Vandeway, uh, if you could talk to us maybe about forestry, if you have a, a, a better uh, pulse on that, if we could get a little more specific um, in thinking about what um, the, the maybe the hot contentious issues might be, um, if you know. And also, um, are there opportunities that you see coming down through legislation this year or maybe just in this next biennium uh, that really uh, pull you guys into some bipartisanship um, and, and give us your feel on that? Um, 
Yeah, I can go ahead and start. And that's the one thing um, that I've enjoyed. I've been on the Ag Committee since I began uh, my legislative career. Um, because I do find that it's easier to find bipartisan agreement when we're talking um, about agriculture, when we're talking about uh, natural resources in general. Um, yes, there are disagreements, but, but it's easier to get to, to an agreement on, on these committees than some of the others. Um, I think what uh, agriculture, what we're looking at, I live in uh, the great uh, county, Grant County, so the heart of the Columbia Basin. Um, it's very dry um, naturally, but we have uh, a series of dams, the, the uh, uh, biggest being Grand Coulee Dam. And without Grand Coulee and the Columbia Basin Project, the irrigation project, um, my area would be nothing but sagebrush and sand. Right now, it's a very productive area. Uh, we have some of the best, uh, uh, highest producing farms in the world uh, because of Grand Coulee Dam. So water is, is um, a necessity. I think availability of water uh, right now, at this point in time, I also sit on the drought committee. At this point in time, we do have enough water, even at the end of a very hot August. Um, hopefully that'll continue through the end of the year before, before winter. But uh, availability and access to water is, is a big issue um, for, for agriculture and it's on a statewide basis. And we've worked on uh, water issues um, ever since I got onto, uh, into the legislature. So that's one thing that's never gonna go away. Um, I think the other piece that I'm concerned about uh, moving forward is additional regulations uh, regarding uh, the type of pesticides or herbicides or um, water usage so regulations. Um, are always a concern um, to farmers. And right now, um, I just got off a call before this webinar with our local um, county health district. Right now, we're, we're very concerned about our, our farm workers, um, our, not only our uh, H-2A workers from out of the country, but the workers that come to our state um, on, a, on a regular basis from other states and they follow the crops. Very, very concerned about the health of those folks, trying to keep them safe, trying to, to get the crops harvested at the same time. And um, so will we have to look at that into the future, how, how we're going to uh, address our, the safety of our farm workers and the education of the farm workers. A lot of them don't speak English. And so I'm fortunate. I have a seatmate who speaks Spanish. And so he's helping with the education of these farm workers as well. So that's a, that is something I think we'll have to address in the, in the future sessions. Um, and I was gonna mention forest health, but I'll let Senator Vandaway talk about that. And then there's one more thing that we, we might have to address and that's the invasive species, uh, uh, not only weeds, um, but uh, we have a, a new invasive species and that's that Asian murder hornet is what they call it. And it's a great big, big hornet. And it's been found in uh, Western Washington and, and we might have to address how to, how to control that if, if it gets a hold of uh, and, and populates in Washington state. So, um, I'll let uh, Senator Vandaway talk about forest. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, that was a good synopsis on agriculture. Um, I think the, the issues going forward for um, timber in my mind would be um, the, the major, the two major one is continue timber land loss, both from um, home conversion or converting it into to homes and uh, loss due to protecting um, various species. We just kind of are finishing up the Marbled Murillet um, habitat loss and, and that was unfortunate. We put more 
uh, land, set aside more land uh, for for habitat, um, and and I, I really don't feel like it's it's um, unfortunately going to make a, a difference to the survival predictions for that bird really in in any way. And um, <clears throat> I was hoping the the federal government would step in uh, with President Trump's administration and and change that that did not play out that way. Um, but we'll keep moving forward. But that the, the fear is that there's going to be uh, additional uh, species that need uh, additional protection in, in the future, and that will um, uh, continue to, to have less timberland ready for, for harvest. So home conversion and habitat loss for uh, species of anchor are the two major concerns. Um, obviously, fire is a big concern, and uh, but I, I feel fire is something uh, we can deal with. Senator Warnick just mentioned forest health. That's a great way to um, deal with uh, uh, fire potential and um, and uh, making our our land uh, more valuable because trees grow better with uh, in in a healthy forest. Um, a lot of that falls on the Forest Service in that they have not been able to keep up with their um, health treatments. Um, and uh, so much more of their money every year is going towards uh, fire extinguishment as opposed to um, healthy forests. So hopefully the, on the federal side, they'll get that turned around and, and hopefully we can continue to make inroads on the, on the state side. Um, but I, I continue to see fire as uh, a major threat um, to our timberlands, but it's something that we should and can uh, overcome. Um, in the in the for the last two years, we've um, passed a Senator Van de Weg, you stopped. So Judy, do you know what he was going to mention about in the last two years? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, when we get him back, because I he's frozen on my screen, I assume he's probably yeah he on mine as well. So. Okay, if he comes back, we, we can turn it back over to him. But in the meantime, um, I did get a question that came in and um, I think you guys alluded to this at the very beginning, but we had some new people pop on. But can you tell us what the two top budget issues are going to be moving forward? And also then due to the lack of or reduction in revenue uh, this mm -hmm. forecasted season, uh, how's that going to impact the, the budget and um, how do you see that moving forward in this this next biennium? Um, yeah, that's <laughs> that's the sixty four thousand dollar question. That's an old old game show kind of thing. Um, is is what the the budget impacts are going to be? Um, what I'm uh, most concerned about is um, impacts to our healthcare system in general. Um, I've already heard about our, uh, uh, our uh, long-term care facilities, um, the loss of, of uh, budget support there for them. Um, I know that, and this is kind of off topic as far as ag, but uh, uh, so the long-term care facilities, but then the mental health uh, issues um, as well in our facilities. Uh, and we are seeing more and more mental health um, issues in the rural areas, in the farming areas, especially when uh, farming, uh, the prices are, are very, very low compared to the expenses of, of running a farm. So um, when, when someone who's been farming for years and years and years, and then just through no fault of, of that family or, or that farmer um, can't can't sell their product um, uh, at a price that they need to to get to make their expenses then the the mental health factor comes in so um, so I think that's you know that's that's going to be a big impact um, is what our what our health care systems are going to be needing um, in in the future um, and then the second question was about capital is that right or what was um, so with a reduction in um, our state budget, uh -huh. uh, 
do you maybe do you do you expect there might be some um sorry i'll turn my video back on okay additional taxes that might come oh. up or oh um, are schools going to need more funding and oh. just all those kinds of high level questions yes yeah um i'm sure i'm sure there's going to be proposals for additional taxes um and and i have a very hard time saying yes i think that's what we should do um i just have never um uh i shouldn't say never but i routinely don't support additional taxes um we have had uh, you know i'll have to confess in this in this big forum here i did vote for a gas tax once um but uh, because of, of the need for, for infrastructure, road infrastructure. But as far as other in, increased taxes, I just can't see imposing new taxes on businesses, both large and small uh, businesses and or residents of the state of Washington at this time when everything is so uncertain. We do have the budget stabilization account uh, that uh, we we do have some funds available. We moved some before we left in March, uh, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough. And I would also like to see what uh, what happens on a federal level. But um, the uh, uh, new revenue or increased taxes is I'm sure it's going to be proposed, but um, don't think I'll be able to support that. Senator Van de Wey, are you able to come back and join us? Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if I should leave off my video so that the connection stays better. That that would be fine. Uh, I was asking Senator Warnick, um, basically top two budget item, you know, biggest concerns in the budget, top two. Um, if you foresee taxes being um, raised in certain areas, um, and then if you wanted to finish your thoughts from before about uh, timber. Yeah, sure, and I'll, and I'll start with that. Um, so the past, uh, and I don't know exactly when I cut out, I apologize. The, the past two sessions, we have had proposals that would um, um, assess insurance premiums to, fu uh, to fund a, a better um, forest health treatments and for uh, dedicated funding towards extinguishment. I expect those probably to be back. I don't know if they'll ever get to the governor's desk or not, um, but I think that is uh, an example of a way that we can um, stay ahead of uh, wildfires because uh, in order to have success there, we have to stay ahead of it. We can't just be reactionary. We have to be uh, proactive and uh, treat our, our, our force and make sure that we're ready to respond to um, wildfires. Um, and then on your question, uh, that the, oh, I wanted to finish up because you asked for, uh, stuff that was bipartisan support and I'll then go again, go back to a couple of things that Senator Warnick mentioned, um, country of, uh, label or, um, country of origin labeling with beef and get, and making it easier to get local beef to market by using maybe some state inspectors and stuff. Both of those we had last session, both of them, everybody wanted to support, but uh, with the cool, there was some uh, concern about federal um, uh, jurisdiction and interstate commerce, and so we didn't, but that now has been overcome, so I expect that to be a pretty popular bill, or it's my understanding it's been overcome. And then, yeah. um, as I mentioned, uh, Oregon passed uh, a, a, a legislation that we're looking at about uh, potentially getting state inspectors, but in general, making it easier uh, to get locally raised beef uh, to market. I think a lot of people would be excited about that just because it's, um, it's local, it's um, potentially better growing than uh, uh, some of the, the commercial operations, and uh, it's a way to s support um, small farmers. So I think a lot of people would be excited about that if we can make something there happen. It's uh, probably the biggest um, question around that is just the cost uh, of, of it. Um, on the budget stuff, I would say that two, the two biggest things, it really is, well, the biggest thing certainly is having a balanced budget. Um, in the United States, the only government that's allowed not to 
or to spend money that they don't have or to have an unbalanced budget is, is the federal government. Every local government you deal with and, and all 50 states all have balanced budgets and, and we actually can't spend money until we have it in our treasury to, to actually cut a check for. Um, we do have the option to borrow and to bond money, um, but uh, getting, that, getting the budget into balance uh, between the time we start session and June 30th uh, will be the number one priority. Um, and in order to do that, we're probably gonna have a mixture of some more federal help um, and some cuts. Where those cuts are, it's, it's hard to say. During the Great Recession, when we did things like cut Medicaid, we didn't cut um, the reimbursements to, to hospitals. And, and Judy and I both share a um, kind of the same type of healthcare system where they're, they're smaller hospitals, but they don't, they're big enough that they don't get all the federal incentives for being small. Um, so it's important to us. They, we, we didn't cut the reimbursements they get. We just, we just changed the eligibility for a family to be on Medicaid. Uh, in other words, we, we kicked entire families off as opposed to cutting uh, what each family is eligible for. I suspect the, that if we need to cut Medicaid or other healthcare programs, those will be done the same way. Um, and I would expect some, some cuts to happen around there. And I think we will um, be taking close looks at look at K twelve education. A lot of that is deemed to be untouchable, but uh, depending on how the COVID outlook looks at that point, um, I I I have a feeling a lot of a lot of school districts are wanting to keep staff around and not not lay them off um, just because it's hard to get those staff back, but. Uh, that is an area the state potentially could could uh, look at staff that aren't directly dealing with um, students, but that's controversial, and I and I don't know if that will um, happen. And then you, um, there was a the, on on part of that question. It was around uh, can the federal government help with our um, capital? And Senator Warnick actually is much more familiar with this than I am. I'm under the I, I would be under the belief that if the federal government gets uh, gives us money and it goes into our general fund, that still would not be money that is eligible for the capital budget um, funding um, algorithm. Is that correct, Judy? Um, and it depends on the programs. There are um, some that would be a, a matching fund type of, of uh, um, allocations. Um, I talked about the Columbia Basin, um, <clears throat> the water system, the uh, irrigation system, there's matching funds there. Uh, the majority of what capital budget is, is uh, um, revenue coming in from different, uh, different sources, but then the bonding authority, and you touched on that. Um, and without, with the drop in revenue, our drop in bonding authority would go right along with that. So I don't know what size our capital budget would be this year uh, because of that, but uh, it, uh, there is very well could use some of the federal dollars if it's allocated for specific purposes. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys both. Uh, so Senator Vandeweg, you probably have a pretty good pulse on what's going on in schools since your wife is a principal at a, at a local school. Uh, she probably gives you the inside scoop as far as what's, what's gonna play out in the next year and, and even into the future. Um, it's a crazy year with COVID, that's for sure. Um, the next question I wanna post to you guys, and let me remind uh, participants, if you have a question for either of the senators, you can just type those in the question and answer box. And I'm monitoring that so that I can um, send those on to the senators. Uh, ag forestry is um, it's one of its main, um, main projects for its participants is something called the Public Policy Project. And Senator Warnick, you're familiar with this. We had a few mm -hmm. forestry classes uh, speak um, and with your support uh, behind some bills this year as well. Um, 
Moving forward, though, in a COVID type situation for these ag forestry participants still wanting to propel their their public policy projects or or in future classes coming forward with some public policy projects. It's going to be different um, if you guys are going, it's going to be harder to interact with you guys um, if we're not face to, able to be face to face. But do you see any other challenges for our ag forestry participants in bringing uh, public policy um, initiatives forward to, to you and uh, your colleagues? It depends on the policy that you're trying to bring forward. Um, <clears throat> If, if there's something that would help in a situation uh, that we're facing right now, um, I, I think there could be more, um, more support for it. And we both talked about the, um, the meat um, industry, the cattle industry. The, um, uh, so we, we both talked about that, but there is something that we didn't talk about. And uh, unfortunately, Senator Bandaway is experiencing a, um, a piece that we are sorely lacking in our rural areas, and that's good broadband, uh, good access to, to Wi-Fi possibilities. I don't know what he has, you know, in, in the location he's at, but um, I'm fortunate. I am in Moses Lake. Our PUD has done uh, a fiber project so that we have good good access. But there are a lot of small communities um, that are suffering for the lack of, of broadband, lack of Wi-Fi. Um, and that brings it into um, real key, not only our businesses, but uh, the perspective of our school. Um, I have grandkids that live in a small community or outside of a small community on a small farm. They had to take their car and their uh, computers or their little um, laptops and sit in a parking lot in, a in their community to get broadband. And that was last year after school was, uh, was dismissed. So that's a key piece of what we should be looking at uh, as legislators as well. I sit on a couple of committees that will will ask for some help there, budget help. The CURB uh, Committee, Community Economic Revitalization Board, and then that uh, we also work with the Public Works Board. So, um, and the Office of uh, uh, Broadband through the Governor's Office. So we're that's going to be a, a something that we really need to take a strong look at. Uh, is there policy along that that ag forestry could, uh, could help implement? It's a good question, there might be. But uh, I, especially with our, our schools being uh, impacted the way they are, we need to have access to broadband. So hopefully that answered the question. <laughs> Yes, and Senator Vandewig, would you like to uh, add your piece to that? And remind me exactly what, what was the question, by the way, I agree wholeheartedly <laughs> <that> morning. <laughs> so ag forestry, one of the uh, components uh, that all the participants going through the program participate in is a public policy project where they choose um, something that's mm -hmm. usually near and dear to their hearts that they're going to try to implement some, some change and want to see something changed in the in their in their state or even in their local community. Um, so moving forward, um, do you see any challenges for them implementing or trying to move forward their public policy projects in the time of COVID? Uh, I know meeting with legislators is going to be much more challenging. Uh, meeting with associations, meeting with um, uh, lobbyists, meeting with all these people that um, that would help them propel their public policy projects forward. And also, Senator Warnick, you, you gave some great uh, ideas for public policy projects as well, right? Helping with uh, broadband, increasing broadband in the rural areas. So Senator Vandeweg, maybe you have some ideas as well, or you have some su uh, suggestions or advice for these public policy projects moving forward. Sure, and, and as I mentioned uh, earlier, my gut tells me that kind of, the, how, however the legislature meets during regular session, in the time of COVID, 
um, overall, there's going to be just less legislation passed, which makes it more difficult to get um, potentially uh, a proposed legislation like that uh, in the law. Uh, but I wouldn't give up. I think if, if you come forward with a solid, good, solid idea, um, uh, the legislature is, is always going to be uh, ready and willing to look at it. And I've always paid particularly close attention to the stuff you guys have proposed in the past. Um, if, if I was to give you a suggestion and, um, you guys have kind of worked on this in the past as well, um, a, a deregulation at, at some, in some manner that, um, isn't, doesn't have broad impacts, but just makes daily life easier, uh, would be a direction I would, uh, er, encourage you to go in, um, both because it's, it's good for all of us to have less of that. And um, it's, it, can be very, it can be very popular to, to do that. We, Senator Warnick mentioned regulation a while ago, a while ago and all of us, none of us like regulation. Um, some of it obviously is, is needed, um, but in areas where you can have um, bipartisan support and popular deregulation, I think probably would be your best bet. That is great advice. Thank you very much. I have a new question that came in. Um, so, and this is a big one. <laughs> uh, what are your expectations on legislative or hearings on racial equity and equality moving forward? Oh. <laughs> I waited till the last to drop the big one on you. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, that's, that um, I've, I've been, I think I've already talked about this. The committees that uh, I have been working with during during the summer, um, I'm on a uh, a trafficking uh, commercial trafficking of children committee. I'm on a gender justice committee, um, the food policy forum committee. Every one of those committees has been discussing how we bring in racial justice and or um, equality into those discussions. So I think it's going to, to happen um, naturally. Are we going to have some type of a big uh, omnibus policy bill? I, I don't know that. Um, I'm not prepared to, to introduce a bill like that, but I think there will just naturally be discussion brought into um, each of the committees that we talk to, uh, that we uh, uh, are involved with. Um, as far as agriculture itself, um, I know that I've had discussions in the past on how to, uh, how to get more credit for people of color who don't normally have credit, and this is uh, financial credit, to start their own farming. Um, uh, another uh, area that we were talking about was our farmers markets. Um, how do we help uh, people who have a small, very small farm, very small uh, produce to bring into a farmers market? How do we help those folks of color to participate in that? So I think it's going to be a, a natural discussion um, uh, along with the normal course of business. <clears throat> and uh, I would agree. I think there's probably a higher likelihood that it'll be uh, more of a lens effect. That's my and that... Oh, can I go? Is it, can you guys yeah. hear me? Yeah. 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 I, I would agree with Senator Warnick again. I, I think it will be more of a, a lens effect and that we'll be looking at racial equality through uh, a lens as legislation moves forward, as opposed to doing an omnibus bill. But there, there probably will be some sort of legislation um, that will be looked to or, or um, uh, garner some attention. Um, but that will be probably be more around uh, committee or uh, uh, creating some oversight or, or a committee on, on racial justice or racial equality. Um, I don't think the uh, defund police uh, movement will gain much traction in Olympia, 
but we will, um, there will be some, um, there will be changes that we will make. Um, for instance, uh, I have things that I would support uh, around that endeavor uh, because our, over the years, the Washington State Patrol has, has uh, gotten a rather large umbrella and they, um, they've taken over some, some stuff that the fire service has traditionally done. That stuff very well could move back to the fire service. That's, that's an example of how we could decre def uh, decrease the amount of funding the State Patrol gets but uh, there would, would be not, it wouldn't impact people's everyday um, life. So I think proposals like that will probably move forward, but widespread defunding of police, I don't think will gain much traction. Thank you. So with our uh, few minutes left, can you guys give us the best advice you have for your constituents on how they can interact with you in the upcoming uh, legislative session and moving forward if they have concerns with bills and if they want to be participatory in their government. It's a different world we live in. So if you could give some best advice to, to your constituents and, and really all the, the voters and participators in Washington state that want to participate in government, what advice do you have for them? Um, I... And, and I try my darndest to do this, but I think the emails and the phone calls are the best right now. Um, my assistant is uh, uh, located on the west side, uh, and she nobody is allowed to go into their offices at this point in time. Um, but she's on the computer um, every day, every day, every day. I am too. Um, and I, I get behind, but I think the best, the best way to communicate is first of all with emails, um, phone calls, our, our numbers still work, the assistants um, can get them, and, um, and then uh, finally a letter. A letter takes longer, an old-fashioned letter takes longer to respond to, but um, but I have to admit, I'm behind on those emails too. So it's um, just keep trying uh, through through the normal channels. And um, even if we're in session and are not able to to, to have people come into our offices, um, I'd be willing to meet out in the park or something like that as long as it's not raining. But um, but I. I think the normal channels are going to be the best, um, and and the biggest one is is email, uh, and then we can we have set up more and more meetings just like what we're doing today, uh, Zoom calls or webinars, uh, we can do that as well. So because it's it's difficult to even get out and meet folks um, during this time, so um, just keep trying. And the, the, what I would add to that, um, because we do have different, as, as Senator Warnick mentioned, there are, are obviously different platforms that you can interact with us, um, phone call, email, letters. Um, and so sometimes we get a little bit overwhelmed uh, or there's a lot going on at once. What I always encourage constituents to do, if whatever platform you choose to communicate with us, if you don't hear back, uh, reach out again because we it, it has happened where we've missed we've missed stuff and um always feel bad about that but during session i mean it's it's it it's not uncommon for for my office to get 150 to 300 emails uh, a day so right. um if if you don't hear anything back just just try again and be patient with us the the entire washington legislature works the same way there's there's 147 of us total, 49 in the Senate, and 98 in the House, and um, or 49 in the Senate, sorry, and yeah. um, and we all have one assistant, and that that essentially makes up the the, the legislature. So uh, we can we can be very very busy and uh, just keep trying if if we're um, if we're not getting back to you. That's great, thank you. We have a couple minutes left and I just got another question and if you don't mind, I, I'll ask this real quick. With the legislation that has the potential to bring local beef to more consumers, 
Do you feel that it will influence more agricultural producers to contribute and in turn lead to the decline of food deserts in our state? I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. Uh, there's been a new uh, processing plant. Well, it was a, a renewal of a processing plant in my district in Lincoln County in Odessa. So that came back online. Uh, with this uh, Oregon legislation that we're looking at, um, it will give small producers more of a chance to, to be able to take their, their animals for processing to a local uh, meat processing plant. So, um, and I'm, I'm really hoping that that will help on both ends, the consumer and the, and the producers. So, and any, any place that uh, we can look at to, to do that, um, I'm going to be supportive of. So, um, and we, we see that now because of the, the food chain being kind of interrupted, uh, especially with the uh, potatoes and the processing of potatoes um, for restaurants, that was interrupted. The milk process was interrupted uh, with the closures. And so we see how important and how fragile our food system is. And um, so if we can, if we can make that uh, uh, a better uh, process, a better system for our consumers, that's, that's what I'm going to be supporting. Senator Vandeweg, do you have a comment on that? We might have lost him. Okay, so, <laughs> and that's okay. Oh, there he's back. He's back. Senator Vandeweg, can you hear us? Yeah, yes. And uh, I heard most of uh, Senator okay. Warren's uh, response. Um, the, the thing I would add would be that um, if, local producers can get their um, product to local markets, it's also gonna increase uh, the, the amount of money they get for that product because uh, they'll, they'll be able to, to sell it more in a grocery store than they can when you have to buy a side of beef or, or whatever. And I think that will encourage uh, more people to do it as well and hopefully bring back the family farm a little bit. And I'm not super familiar with um, uh, the, the the way that's produced and, and slaughtered and everything, but I think it might also bring a wider variety of, of products as well, um, beyond beef and, and chicken and pork and different varieties of those. So um, I I mean it, I it's the, it's one of the greatest things I can do. I mean we're super excited about it, and uh, I believe Senator Warnick and I would be wanting to fight for funding to make it happen because there is going to be a cost there, and we are going to be in a in a in a budget crisis, but um, I'm I'm super hopeful, and I think it could be a, a a valuable and great change to what we buy in our supermarkets. Yeah, that sounds great. So with that, I would like to say thank you to both of you, Senator Warnick and Senator Vandewig. I really appreciate the time that you've given to Ag Forestry today to spend the hour with us and answering questions and giving us this legislative update. You guys talked about a couple of things that are going to come up on our upcoming webinars. So next month we're going to be uh, listening to the WSU new bee and pollinator facility. Dr. Shepard is going to talk to us and give us an update on those um, Asian giant hornets. And <laughs> following that in October we get to hear from April Clayton um, and she's going to talk to us about Ag uh, labor issues. And so some of the things you alluded to um, becoming uh, hot topics this this uh, session. So please join us for those upcoming webinars. And again, I just want to say thank you again for your time, Senator Warnick and Senator Vandewig. If you have any questions for them in the future, you can either forward them to me or you can um, obviously uh, send them directly to the senators themselves. And senators, please give a huge thank you to your legislative assistants. Peter and Cynthia are wonderful. So they are. Uh, thank please you. send them yes, my thank you. yous. Yes, of course. All right. Thank you All right. Have a great rest. Thanks, Kara. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.